noon in Paris this Tuesday. The clock marks the beginning of the confinement of the French capital and the whole country. The police have received firm instructions. Any person who ventures outside of their home must present a signed certificate of required travel. It is recommended to speak only to five people per day while keeping a distance of at least one meter. Authorities in all countries of the world affected by containment orders have taken steps to force people to stay in their homes. In Peru, the army is responsible for this mission. At the same time, measures are being taken to disinfect places that a few days ago were still welcoming crowds. Thus, in Lebanon, firefighters are washing the surroundings of the famous ruins of Baalbek with water. Now is the time for global solidarity to fight the virus and help isolated people. Here, a few hundred meters from the White House in Washington, a Virginia sheriff and his team are distributing free meals to families affected by the closure of schools due to the coronavirus. It took the current coronavirus pandemic to understand that health is a luxury. Lux TV, the global lifestyle channel, has decided to offer its viewers the opportunity to send their advice and best wishes to the world or to loved ones. The first messages of sympathy, courage and health come from China, where the virus first took many lives. The very first message received was that of Gael Caron. Gael has worked for 15 years as an image reporter for numerous Lux TV reports in Asia. For more than 50 days, Gael and his journalist colleague from France 2 have been the only non-Chinese journalists stranded in Wuhan, the center of the epidemic. Gael's testimony is poignant. My name is Gael Caron. With my colleague Arnaud Miguet, it's now been more than 50 days since we were put in confinement here in Wuhan, the epicenter of COVID-19, where it all started. We arrived on January the 22nd for news coverage for France 2. And suddenly, during the night of January the 22nd to the 23rd, while we were still editing, we learned that the government decided to lock down the city, the airports, stations, roads. From the next morning at 10 a.m., everything would be blocked. These are measures that very quickly apply to the whole province, the province of Hubei, which has about 60 million people. It's about the size of the total population in France. And very quickly, but to a lesser extent, containment measures were extended to the whole country. Overnight, the world stopped. The stores closed, the roads were deserted, there was a great silence. A silence which, in fact, only added to this climate of fear that was in the city. Since ultimately, we're facing something that's not materialized, which causes human damage, and from which we do not really know how to protect ourselves. We wear a mask, we take our temperature several times a day, we wash our hands. We follow the instructions to the letter, reassuring ourselves as much as we can. It's really the experience of a lifetime, and ultimately, the hardest part about it is the uncertainty. We have the uncertainty of the time we spend closed up away from home. But there's also the uncertainty regarding the virus and the damage it can cause. So we wait. And the wait is long. After we reason, we stay positive, if I can say that. We say that this virus, this epidemic, could have happened in another era. A time when there was no internet, no television. Because the internet maintains a social bond and time passes more quickly. And then the days go by, we keep ourselves informed, we watch the figures go down, day by day. We start to say, that we have not been locked up for nothing, we've not sacrificed our social lives for nothing. It's a real ray of hope. Panic is not helpful, fear is. To be courageous is to act intelligently without panicking. And as the Chinese say, Jiao.
Hello guys, I'm Aurelia. I live in Beijing. We have had the virus for two months, but today we can say that we've almost beaten it and we will beat it. Now it's up to you to do the same. Keep your spirits up. Life goes on. You're going to beat it. We believe in you. Hello, my name is Severine. I'm a French woman who lives in China. The events that you're going to experience now, we've been experiencing them since the beginning of the year. So I want to tell you, good luck. We will get there. Now just follow the instructions. Take care of your elders, because they are the most vulnerable, and we will win this war. We are counting on you. Ladies and gentlemen, how are you? Hello, I'm Olivier. I live in Beijing. And I'm pleased to tell you that here in China, after two months of a fierce battle, we've won. But the war continues. It's you who are now on the front line. So follow the instructions, keep your spirits up, and tell yourself that you're going to win the war, because we are the strongest. I want to say hello to my friends Paul, Elior, and Charlotte, who are in Paris. I know the school's closed in France. It doesn't matter. I stayed at home for more than two months. Now is a good time to read and write. Good luck. After experiencing panic, fear, and the inability to cope with death, today we see hope and realize that life is more important than anything. And we send our best wishes to those who are fighting the virus. Come on. See, the important thing is that you stay at home because there's a curfew now, okay? No one is allowed out, especially someone that is like 72 years old. After you're 65, you're not allowed out of the house anymore in California. So we stay home and we eat here, right? Oh yeah, that's yummy. I eat with the whiskey and there's Lulu. Lulu loves carrots, whiskey loves carrots. I just had my little bit of vegan food. Oh, that was yummy, huh? Oh, see, that's what we do. We don't go out, we don't go to restaurants, we don't do anything like that anymore here. We just eat with whiskey and with Lulu, we have a good time, we get entertained. Look at that beautiful smile she has, huh? Oh yes, oh yes, the yummies, huh? And we have a good time eating here together. So much more fun than going outside. No more restaurants, okay? No more restaurants, forget all that public gatherings, restaurants, and all these gymnasiums out the window. You stay home. Hey, whiskey, huh? <laughs> you, <laughs> and I have you in my neck. Mwah. Yeah, whiskey, and you, I have you too. Now I have both of you. <laughs> Look at this picture here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs>